Hey folks, Cool18 here, and welcome to another Unity tutorial on how to make a 2D clone of Flappy Bird in Unity here. And uh, in the last episode, we ran into, well, which turns out to be pretty much a broken feature of the 2D physics engine in Unity. So, to recap, in a 3D version of, uh, if, you're, if you're using a 3D physics system, then the correct way to do exactly what we're trying to do is to have a kinematic rigid body on our looper and have all the colliders marked as triggers. And that will work. You just need one kinematic rigid body and then some triggers and then on trigger enter will fire. It appears as though in the 2D version of the engine, however, it won't work. Kinematic rigid bodies don't trigger anything ever. So I, I feel like this is a, going to be a bit of a, of a hack that I'm not happy with. Well, there's two possible options here. One, I could actually switch to using the 3D physics engine, which would actually work perfectly fine. Uh, the important thing would be in the size for like the Z axis, just set the Z axis to be like a hundred in terms of scale, uh, just to make sure that everything's going to intersect in the, you know, in the, these directions over here. Alternatively, what I'm going to do here, even though I'm not completely thrilled by it, is our uh, BG looper object is going to be not kinematic and setting the gravity scale to zero because normally the gravity scale is one and you'll see it'll fall. And so I'm going to set the gravity scale to zero so it will not be affected by gravity. It will continue to move with the main camera in a way that you're not really supposed to do things in the physics system um, because I'm not actually using forces, but whatever, it's going to work. And you see here it's going to collide with number one, number two, number three, number four. Everything works exactly the way that we want it even though we've done it wrong. This is actually the wrong way to do things, but it's going to work. And to me, this is actually inappropriate. And it might not be something that they can do, that, that the Unity people can change, because they're using the Box 2D physics system to do this. And it might just be the way that the Box 2D physics system works, but it is inconsistent with the way the 3D system works. And that's really not good, because the 2D and 3D system are supposed to be completely consistent in terms of how all their functions work, except for the naming of things. Um, and that's clearly not the case. So I'm kind of unhappy about that. Let's move on. So we've got our script. All right. And it is correctly firing now when we trigger things. So excellent. What we need is a uh, int of num bg panels, which is six. We know that and hard coding things like this is rarely good, but you know, it's a quick little game. Let's, let's put that in and see that it works. And so, okay, we've triggered something. Now we've, uh, we know what we've collided with. Uh, we can get information about the colliders, um, bounds. I thought really, Hmm. You get a shape count. Okay. Uh, um, okay. We know that everything in here is the box 2D collider. So what we can do is our collider object, we can give it a cast to box. Apparently we can't do that. Come on. Stop giving me random syntax errors and, and autocompletes. There we go. Box collider 2D. So we're going to cast things to box collider 2D. So now we should have a size. Excellent. Which is a vector 2D, which means it's got an X. So now we know the float width of BG object is equal to that. So what we want to do is we want to move this thing to the right. So collider dot transform dot position. So vector three pause equals that. So we want to go pause dot X plus equals the width of the object times number of background panels. I think this will work. Let's find out. Hit play. No. Really? I'm quite surprised, actually. Oh, 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 oh. Silly me. Uh, we need to assign the position again. There we are. Let's try that. I save it, play, thump. Our first gap is double plus ungood. Hmm.
because the position is centered. Why is that? Why is that not working the way I want it to work? Minus width divided by two. I'm, I'm kind of just guessing here and that's actually not a good thing to do, but I think that's actually correct. Let me turn off the uh, wireframe mode. Yeah, the looping seems to be good. As far as the camera goes, it looks okay. Uh, we might have a little bit of wonkiness with the ground in a couple of places. We've got to just check the maybe the verticality of something. But there we go. Now it looks like we're scrolling the background just fine. As far as we can tell in the game, everything is groovy. So we just keep reusing the same panels over and over, and everything is great. And if I actually interact with the space bar... Yeah, I'm feeling it. Now, the funny thing is, is that the um, the ground is not actually supposed to go at the same speed as the uh, the sky in the game. And the reason is that it, it's supposed to generate a little bit of a parallax effect. So what I'm actually going to do on the ground here, I'm going to add a new custom script called um, uh, ground move. -er. I'm just going to have the ground move by itself towards the left. Oops. So, um, probably in the fixed update, because obviously the ground does interact with the physics engine in some ways. So I'm going to go fixed update, and we're going to have a float called speed is going to be equal to, I don't know, 5F. That's probably way too much. And so we're going to go um, vector3 pause equal transform dot position pause mm, well, we'll go plus equals, no, pause.x plus equals negative, well, we'll just put in speed, and then we'll just have a negative speed there, because we're moving towards the left, times time dot delta time. So now the background, if we can find our player bird over here, should be panning towards the left. Is it just not fast enough? Let's make it go much, much faster. Oh, again. Ah, assign the position back to that. All right, let's hit play. There we go. And now if we look, the ground is definitely panning faster. Let's maximize this and see what the effect feels like. Actually, almost going too fast, I think. Here's a question, actually. Shoot, I'm going to have to look at the game. Do we want the pipes to be moving along with the ground? Probably. You know, I'm actually thinking that the ground is not the thing that's going to be moving. It's just we want the, the sky to seem to move less fast. So, okay, let's remove the ground mover from this. And actually, even though it's misnamed, we're going to add it to the sky and make it move in the positive direction at like half the speed of the bird. Because the, the bird is moving towards the right at one. So we're going to move the sky to the right at half of one. There we go. All right, so the ground's not moving at all. So any movement you see in the ground is actually just the bird going there. And in fact, we're going to make the sky move almost the same speed as the bird so it's barely going to scroll oh i like that yeah 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 and then the pipes will come in and they'll be matched exactly with the ground that feels pretty good still need to put a ceiling on here for the bird Whee! okay i think we've got to resolve a question with the physics system and honestly i think that since we found out that setting this to a kinematic rigid body and having it interact with triggers when we hit, say, the ground or a pipe is not going to work. We know that. So we know for a fact the bird has to be a, um, a physics object, an actual rigid body with an actual collider. And when we hit the ground, we actually do want it to bounce. So I guess we're going to change our movement code for our bird. So let, let's look at our bird here. We've got a bird movement script. And that's it. It's got nothing else going for it. So... 
let's go ahead and add a box collider 2d to the bird now question how big does it go now if we were to add the collider to the sprite it would automatically size everything to be correct uh, we didn't, wouldn't even have to use a box collider. We could use a polygon collider to get like maximum accuracy. Now, the funny thing about uh, Flappy Bird is it's actually known for having a really crappy collider size um, that's like completely inappropriate. Now, I could resize the collider here, but I can also just hold shift and then I can resize the collider using these little handles. So we're going to bring that in. We're going to have a relatively tight collider. In fact, when you're making a game like this, it's often better to have the collider be slightly smaller than your object especially considering that there's these extra corner bits that don't really um, mesh with anything. Um, but this is Flappy Bird, so we're going to leave it like this. So technically you could hit here, wouldn't look like you really collided with things, but you still would, and deal with it, it's Flappy Bird, that's the way it works. So we will add a rigid body 2D, and we'll have it be physicsed. In fact, I will. Uh, I, the bird movement script is going to change completely. Um, well, I say completely. We don't need gravity anymore. We do need the flap velocity. We don't need a max speed necessarily. Um, forward speed is probably fine. We still kind of want a rotation, or do we? God damn, I'm not happy with how things are progressing here. Let's see. Actually, here's another thing. We actually don't want the ground we want the ground to be default because we want the bird to collide with the ground the sky can stay in the background layer the looper can stay in the background layer but what we have to change is why is everything colliding with everything again oh is that part of my test at some point I went and like changed things around I think I was messing with a bunch of different stuff here everything can collide with everything no that's not true the background the background still only collides with the background. The thing is that, no. Hang on. Because we want the ground to collide with the BG looper. I guess the BG looper is going to be default. Okay. No, we need an extra layer, don't we? Because the background can't collide with the player. Here's the thing we're going to do. We're going to set the player. We're going to make a new layer for the player. So, player is going to collide with everything with the default is not going to collide with background there and the background can collide with everything except the player that works beautifully in fact that's the best way to explain things the background does not collide with the player everything else is fair game so now if I hit play the triggers in the background are working uh, the player has the gravity scale there it doesn't actually need gravity being applied here or there Round is trigger. We don't want it to be as trigger. We want it to be an actual box collider. Actually, I'm going to remove maximize on play here. The physics system really does not work the way that I keep thinking it works in the 2D engine. It, it definitely works differently than I think it should. The BG looper here now is not triggering these anymore. God, none of this makes any sense whatsoever. What if I set a trigger here? Does that work again? Yes. Good. Thump. Okay. That is vaguely the way things are supposed to work. Or not so much. <laughs> Everything is broken. Hit that. Boom. Flap once. It's like permo flap mode. All right, that's fine. We can we can work with this. So, <clears throat> we don't want to mess with the position directly. Always very very bad to do when messing with the, the physics system. Instead, when we add our velocity, we want we have a rigid body 2D attached to our object. We want to add a force equal to this velocity. Let's see what that does. I think we need to dramatically magnify things. Hmm. Flap velocity. Let's make it like 100 and see what happens. Make it like 1,000. 10,000. 
Oh, it should be an impulse, too. Uh, does it have a mode for that? Add velocity? No, of course it doesn't. Hmm. Well, we resolved one issue here. Let me let me consider exactly how we want to rewrite the player bird code to use the built-in 2D physics. I'm so upset that the trigger does not work the way I want it to because that's really the way, the really the way I want things to work. But I guess we can't always have what we want. But if we try sometime, we might just get what we need. All right, see you next time, folks. Bye-bye.